Hi everyone, welcome back as we continue through our lectures on torsion. So today we're going to understand how gears transfer motion and power and be able to solve indeterminate torsion members. So why don't we jump straight into some applications. Now many of you might have a watch, okay, less of you now, but um, likely not a mechanical watch. But it used to be that a bunch of gears just countless gears were inside of these little tiny pocket watches and those gears based on the ratios that were moving and how fast one gear wound by a spring was moved it would keep the time but how could you determine what gears would be needed to turn each of the hands at their proper rate or if you go to mountainous regions um, some of the railways will contain a central rail with teeth that a rail car can grip. This allows for the train to climb a steep incline safely and not go tumbling back down it. I've been on one of these and it's absolutely amazing. So if you knew the weight and the incline, how could you determine a proper gear to move the train steadily upwards? Well, we're gonna to begin to learn how to answer those questions today. So first off, let's talk about gears. Gears are a fundamental component. You're going to see them in almost every single mechanical system. And they've got many purposes. They transmit torque, um, and they can also decrease or increase torque, twist, angular velocity, and much more when you transfer from one shaft to another. So in this transfer, things change, or at the very least, torque is transferred. Now, in real life, there's, this is not perfect. You're going to lose some torque, lose some power, lose some something every single time you go from one gear to another. But in this class, we're going to consider them to be perfect, unless stated otherwise. So to study it, we're going to break them apart and look at the forces that are connecting these two gears. So you know, we do this, we know that torque is a position vector, so the distance, in this case the radius, crossed with the force. And so from that, we could actually calculate the force A right here and the force B, which would simply be their torques divided by their radius. Now, because this is an equilibrium, these two forces have to be the same. And so we can get this nice little ratio that torque 2 would be equal to the ratio of the radiuses times torque 1. So torque 2 is equal to the ratio of the radiuses times torque 1. Now, that ratio of the radii we saw in the previous equation is actually called the gear ratio. And it is magic. I'm just going to say this right now, that it's magical. And why is it magical? It's magical because it connects literally everything between these two shafts. Um, now, as a note, there's a very detailed formulation for all of this. Um, but I'll let you look at your book for that rather than going over it step by step. But I want to show you all the things that connects. So the gear ratio, if you know what it is, it tells you what the different radiuses, radii of my gears have to be, their diameters, the number of teeth, because they have to grip properly. And for that, the number of teeth has to be based on the circumference, which is based on the radius. It tells you the torque ratio. It tells you the angle of twist difference. Um, it also tells you the difference in the angular velocity for both. However, do be very careful and note the inverse and negative sign for those last two, because if one is turning in the positive direction, the other one has to turn in the negative direction. They can't, you know, both be turning in the positive direction. It would just break. Okay. So with that, let's talk about power transmission. So we know that we can use these two gears to transfer torque and everything else. But what about power? Because our circular shafts are often used to do this. It goes from the engine to, in this case, the wheels. But I know this is probably not a front wheel drive car, so we go to the back wheels. But forgive me, I'm not going to take the time to correct that. So a car's axle will transmit power from the engine to the wheels. If it's a front wheel drive, it'll be right here, otherwise in the back, and it allows it to move forward. The angular velocity and torque 
are connected to that power. And we get that from this equation below, where power is equal to the torque times the angular velocity. If you're wondering where in particular that comes from, it's because power is equal to work over time. And work in this case is equal to a force times the angle that it moves through. And with a little bit of careful considerations, we can figure what that is. Okay, so now the units for power are either in the SI system a watt, which is a newton times a meter per second, or in the USCS system will be usually a horsepower, which is 550 pounds times a foot per second. Now this is 550 pound foot per second. I'm just making sure that you realize that it's a force unit times a velocity unit, or more likely a force times a distance, which is energy, over a time unit. Okay, so what have we learned so far? We've learned about the gear ratio and how that connects different gears together so that torque and other things can be transferred from one shaft to another. We've also learned how power is transferred from one part of the system to another. And then we can calculate that power output if we know what the torque and angular velocity of a particular shaft is. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.